So we're in the Adelaide Hills of uh, Australia with Mount Yango's uh, Pinot Gris. I feel like I put a lot of Ramato, which means like skin contact or orange Pinot Gris or Pinot Grigio in the club. Um, and I feel like that's doing a disservice, disservice to the actual white version of it. So um, when I heard about uh, this new, this at least new to the US, I don't know how long they've been around in uh, Australia, um, Mount Yango label, I was super excited and I got all of them. <laughs> there's a Shiraz, there's a Blanc de Blanc sparkling and the Pinot Gris. Because of the time of year, I wanted to put in the Pinot Gris um, into the club. And uh, before I get into the actual wine itself, one thing I also just like to note, you'll see it on the bottle, but um, the label themselves beyond, you know, making the wine naturally also works to uh, give back and works with the Indigenous Culinary Institute of Australia, which is very cool. Um, and so all of the artwork that they have on their bottles uh, is from that, it's from Indigenous artists. So very cool um, and very tasty. So the color, honestly, my color is a little messed up because I had red here a second ago, <laughs> but it should be pretty bright, clear. Um, there might be just a hint uh, of tent to it since it is a gray grape and not a white grape, uh, but I can't say with certainty because I'm a little tainted at the moment. Um, on the nose, super aromatic and very like grapefruity at the top, like um, maybe a little bit saline as well, but it's kind of like, it's like this fresh green citrusy thing. Down the bottom, <laughs> this is not helpful, but it smells like Pinot Gris. Like it smells like I know that it's going to be just a teensy bit waxy, maybe a little bit like more stone fruit down here, like peaches or pears. That's not stone fruit, but, um, but like underripe, not, not like fresh, juicy peach, more like a white peach. Uh, so let's try it. Mm. Fresh and crisp and clean really um, strong acidity, especially on the finish. I really get that grapefruit rind at the end, um, but it starts out with more of the peachy flavors that I was initially talking about, uh, a little bit like a crunchy pear that you're uh, um, biting into. Just very fresh, uh, a beautiful version of Pinot Gris. Honestly, it's, a, it's like more, it's more like French in style, you know, and you get a Pinot Gris from there versus Pinot Grigio from, Northern Italy. That's how I would describe it. It's a little more refined um, versus the Pinot Grigios can be a little bit more almost like bitter. Not always, obviously. It's always depends, but that's the my general psalm knowledge uh, <laughs> coming out. So as far as pairing, like I said, like I really wanted to have the Pinot Gris because of this time of year. I would love to put this with, you know, summer salads, start with some like halloumi and watermelon on the grill. I say that a lot, but I want everyone to eat it. Um, seafoods for sure, just generally like whether they're like, uh, you know, anything from lobster to, to shrimps to regular fish, like a whole fish on a grill would be good here. Um, it's also got enough structure that you could put it with like a pizza, especially like a white pizza. It's not perfect for it, but as far as whites go, I would say that this is one that could really stand up to that. So Delicious, tasty, white uh, food wine with Pinot Gris. Enjoy. <laughs> 